We have a bunch of different roster moves today as all of you wait to see what is going to happen with 49ers Brandon Ayuk, but this isn't a BA update. The 49ers make a couple signings and they have some I have released some players as well. So let's take a look at who they've officially added and who uh, the corresponding roster moves will affect. So the 49ers have announced that they have signed defensive line uh, Jonathan Garvin. We talked about this yesterday. It was announced, but it was officially announced today by the 49ers. Garvin, who was originally drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the seventh round, 242nd overall in the 2020 draft, had uh, three years in the NFL where he had played in 38 games with one start, 32 tackles, Two passes defended and one and a half sacks. He was released. He went on to go play in the UFL, where I believe he actually won a UFL championship. But in the UFL, he had 19 tackles and three and a half sacks. He feels kind of like a, a preseason body. We'll see if he uh, is able to uh, be more than just that. But the San Francisco 49ers also signed a punter. They signed Presley Harvin, who was originally uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was actually a drafted punter in the seventh round in 2021. Uh, he appeared in 47 games with the Steelers, had 217 punts, averaged 43.7 per punt. He played in two uh, postseason games as well. Uh, so... He's young. He's 25 years old. And you might be asking, wait a second, what happened to Mitch Wisnowski? Now, this was discussed maybe a couple days ago. I think it was when I was uh, in Kyle Shanahan's press conference where he had mentioned that Mitch Wisnowski has been dealing with a knee issue. And this has been apparent at 49ers training camp because you could see that Mitch was, work was working off to the side and for about the last five days in a row of practice, the 49ers would have a different punter every day trying out for the team. So the 49ers finally land on a punter they like, and they get Harvin, uh, who does have some solid experience. So this is a good indication that Mitch Wisnowski very well might not be out there for the preseason at all so we got to just keep an eye on what's going on with mitch wish but as we know the 49ers making two additional moves in order to make room for these signings they have placed defensive lineman austin bryant on the injured reserve list so there's no indication of uh, what injury was caused, but Bryant, you know, it was very long with his frame, 6'5", 250 pounds. He was actually starting to come along uh, decently well at the end of training camp. Now, he's not a guy that I would assume would make the final roster. He seems like a practice squad guy. Um, so maybe we'll see if he gets waived with an uh, injury designation and maybe they bring him back on the practice squad. So Austin Bryant is let go, but probably the most, most substantial news is the 49ers released tight end Logan Thomas. So Logan Thomas obviously has been a starter with the Washington Commanders for a couple of years. He's been a, a solid producer. He uh, was a captain for them. So it felt like when the 49ers had initially signed him, that he was going to be your tight end too because of the there's no more Charlie Warner, no more Ross Dwelly, Cameron Latu has struggled, Braden Willis heading into year two as a seventh round draft pick. You really didn't know what you're going to get. They also added Eric Salbert, and they have some other tight ends like Mason Pline and, and Tonges. So Logan, when that move was initially made, it was like, oh, this – this makes sense. This guy seems like he has a, a definite path to make this roster. Well, when he was on the field in training camp, he did not look very good. And then he wasn't on the field for a large majority of training camp. 
it was actually funny. I just finished, uh, and you'll see on the channel, I did a kind of biggest surprises video of the 49ers unofficial depth chart as they get ready for a game tomorrow. And we got to Logan Thomas, and I was just like, I don't think there's any shot that this guy makes the roster just based on what I've seen when he's on the field and when he's not on the field. And also, too, when you look at the 49ers tight end position, Braden Willis has had a strong camp. And on top of that, Eric Saubert has had a strong camp as well. And I said in this video that I do believe that the top three tight ends heading into this season will be Kittle, will be Braden Willis, and will be Eric Saubert. I do believe he'll be on the outs along with Cameron Latu. So, uh, and it happened. It, like almost felt like 30 seconds after I had finished the video, um, this news dropped. So, uh, shout out to the 49ers for making me look smart. Um, but um, I think I feel much comfortable with the 49ers tight ends than I did heading into this year. And I, I do believe that this could be a, a, a nice player in, in the coming years. So, and especially this year. So these are the roster moves that the 49ers have made. We will continue to wait and see, obviously, with the roster move that everyone's looking for, which is what is going to happen with San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk. We're going to have to wait and see. But let me know what you guys think about anything of uh, these moves. Again, nothing earth shattering here. I, I, like I said, I think the most substantial move was the release of Logan Thomas. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.